Okay, now we are going to start project plan elements. So it's now a formal project plan. That what are the elements related to project plan? We are talking about project plan. Uh, we have defined project plan. We have talked about composite project plan or master plan. Now, what are the elements that you need to consider uh, while you are presenting, designing, processing a project plan? But remember, there is no universal project plan, universal project plan. Universal means you prepare one project plan and that will applicable for all organization, not like that. So it varies from organization to organization. Project plan varies among organizations, but the key concept is same but the content will not be the same. It varies because you know that some projects are science projects, some are social science projects, some are humanities projects. So there are millions types of projects. So obviously the project elements will vary, but some certain elements are common. What do we say? Some certain elements are common. What's these? The first one is overview. So in your project, you must have a short summary of the objectives of the scope. So once one can understand what's the objectives of this project and the scope of the project, if he, she will feel interest to know the detail of the project, then they will check the rest part of your project proposal. So in your project proposal, you have a good summary of your project objectives and your scope of the project. Then objectives. These objectives, a more detailed statement of the general goals noted in the overview section. So here you have a short summary of objectives. But now you need to open, you need to present detailed statement of the general objectives or general goals, what you have presented in the overview section. So overview section is a summarized section Then objectives means here you have more explained detailed statement. And then the general approach, what it is, describes both the managerial and technical approaches to the work. That is, how, what kind of managerial style this project is going to follow. It is democratic, it is autocratic, it is laissez faire. So managerial approaches you should consider then technical approaches you should consider for decision-making, whether uh, you are going to follow PERT, PERT, CPM, any statistical calculation like standard deviation or what, or you are going to use some uh, apps, uh, project management apps or software. So that should be explained properly under general approach. Then the contractual expects. Uh, next element we have in front of us, you see it. It's contractual, contractual specs. So what are the subject matters of contractual specs? It's include a complete list and description of all reporting requirements, then customer supplied resources, liage arrangements, advisory committees, how can we go for project review, and how can the cancellation process will be active. And these way, many other information will be attached here under contractual aspects. So when uh, two parties, two 
parties agreed on agreed agreed on some terms and conditions explain under contractual aspects then you can say that you 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 project proposal you are proposing a project proposal so your project proposal must go through the process of contractual aspects so you have submitted a project proposal there is another party there are related to approval agencies so two parties should agree on all these contractual aspects uh, and then uh, the project can bring out the project can be uh, uh, can be uh, open for everybody or we can say uh, the project is in light then schedules or schedules uh, someone uh, written in the chat box that predecessor yes every task has a predecessor so if you start with zero today you can start task number one and task number two separately if task one and task two finish only then you can start task three task four and task five together so these way there are always predecessor and and we need to have a proper plan that which one we will start first which one the second third so that's why you need schedules these sections outlines the various schedules and list all the milestone events that is the task that you want to start and you want to finish you must have a schedule without a schedule really impossible to monitor a project impossible you can't monitor a project so once you have contractual aspects you have schedules, schedules, then who will implement the project, who will accomplish all these tasks and how you can accomplish all these tasks. Obviously you need resources. And what kind of resources you need? We can say you need human resources. So you need financial resources. You need physical resources. So you see, you must have a good plan about human resources, how you will recruit, what qualities you are looking for, what should be their salaries, dot, 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 dot. Then what financial resources you have, what kind of financial resources you need in future, what are the sources of financial resources? It is your own fund or bank fund, or it's a partnership, or it's a, uh, some other source you are using. Then physical resources, what land you have, what building you have, what machineries you have, or what land, what kind of land, what sort of buildings or machineries you need to collect, you need to procure in future so this kind of plan obviously you need that's why we say resources and then uh, when you have this so now we can be more specific about the personal personal means the people who are directly involved with the operations of the project so in this level you can make at least of the expected personal requirements of the project. So for this section, you need people with special skills. You need architect, you need engineer, you need charter accountant or, or some other kind of uh, uh, expert people you, you need as per the requirement of the project. And also you need to find out whether existing human resources can be capable to perform all these tasks or not. If existing people are capable enough just to uh, provide them some training, you can organize, you can make a plan of training and development programs that will enough to 
uh, develop your existing personal to a higher level. But in this stage, if you find that the knowledge, the skills, the abilities you are looking from your people, if this is really different, if you offer them training, no, it's impossible for them to cope with the new knowledge, new skills and new abilities. That case is you must have a hiring, hiring plan. That is you must have a recruitment and selection plan. Moreover, you need to agree on evaluation methods. How do you evaluate, evaluate your project? For financial feasibility, we use NPV, IRR, PI, and so many other techniques. So these way for cost, we use cost of capital or weighted average cost of capital. So these way, a project manager or project team, when you go for a project plan, you should determine all the evaluation methods earlier. Even you have human resource management related evaluation methods, because you need to determine performance of your employees. So you need again evaluation method of evaluating the performance of the people that should be written earlier, that should be designed earlier, that should be disclosed to the employees earlier. So that when you go for evaluating performance, no one can say that they have no idea about the performance evaluation. If you want to reward your people, if you want to punish your people, that is also based on performance evaluation. So when we talk about evaluation method, that is not only financial evaluation, that is also related to performance evaluation, that is related to quality evaluation. And this is very important, this is very important. You are submitting your proposal. So if you want to prove that, if you want to prove that your project is problem-free, So we can say that you are not a very good project manager. When you are preparing your project proposal, when you are developing project plan, what sort of problems, probable problems, probable risk are waiting for this project should be identified earlier and suggest and suggest probable solutions of all those potential problems. And that is the feature quality of a good project manager. Good project manager don't wait for problems. They identify all the probable potential problems earlier and then suggest all the probable solutions related to all those problems. And what is the benefit? If really problem occurs, then everybody knows what is the solution. So they can take measures immediately after the problem arise. These section should include any potential difficulties such as subcontractor default, technical failure, tight deadline, resource limitations, a fire incident. So many problems can be incorporated here. And when it says potential problems, remember, I am not talking about identification of problems only. I say, if you are a very good project manager, you will not only identify probable potential problems, moreover, you will provide probable solutions, probable measures of solutions that should be taken if, the problem arises.